Welcome to Simple Truth Gospel with Kilian Uzeshi. Blessed be the name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for giving me another opportunity to teach His precious word to His precious people. Today I'm teaching on a topic which I have titled, Let the Poor Say I Am Rich. Yes, this is a sound Bible principle. In Jewel chapter 3, verse 10, the Bible says, Let the weak say that I am strong. In Romans chapter 4, verse 17, the Bible says, God calleth things that be not as though they were. So don't talk about your problem. Talk about the solution. You know, God demonstrated this in creation when in the midst of darkness, the Bible said that the earth was covered with darkness. But God did not speak to darkness. Rather, he spoke what he wanted to be. He spoke light be and light was. And so this is the way that God operates. And we are admonished to be followers of God or imitators of God as their children. At the end of today's teaching, you will learn how to use your mouth and speak faith-filled words inspired by the Holy Spirit to change every situation in your life. If today is your first day watching this program, this is Simple Truth Gospel with Kirian. And if you subscribe, you will be the first to get the teachings whenever we post them online. I have a YouTube channel and uh, you can always access that uh, YouTube channel. Uh, like I said, Simple Truth Gospel with Kirian Uzoishi. And you can access my iCAV because I have a lot of teachings there that will help you with your Christian work. If there is anything that you want me to answer in this program, any questions, feel free to shoot me an email on simpletruthgospel at hotmail.com. Or you can also write us using the address we have on our YouTube channel. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Before we continue to this program, let us join faith together now in prayers. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for utterance that I will speak boldly to your people as an oracle of God. Praying for the anointing, anointing of your spirit that is already in us, that the anointing of God, the anointing that reveals, anointing that enlightens, anointing that empowers, will empower this teaching today. Holy Spirit, you are the great teacher. I pray that you will open the eyes, the ears, and the heart of everyone listening today. Minister to them simultaneously. Give us answers to our many questions. It is none of me, O oh Father God, but always you alone be praised and glorified. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And welcome again to today's teaching. Like I said earlier, today I am teaching on a topic, on a subject which I have titled, Let the Poor Say I Am Rich. And you know, this is just like an example. So you can use this in any area of your life. You can say, I, 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 we can say, let the weak say that I am strong. Or let the sick say, I am healed. So it's just, it's just a Bible principle. Like I said earlier in Joel chapter 3 verse 10, the Bible says, let the weak say that I am strong. So when you are today, in other words, I am teaching on the power of your words. And when I say power of words, I'm talking about the power of faith-filled words. Not the power of anything that you say. Most of them will not mount to anything at all. But they got to be faith-filled words that are, in, that are in agreement with the word of God. So let's go to the scriptures and see what the Bible says about words. And it's very important because if we find out what the Bible says about words and we follow that direction, we're going to have success in all the areas of our life. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Psalms chapter 33 verse 6, the Bible says, By the word of God were the heavens created, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. So you can see that the, everything seen 
and unseen, heaven and the earth. He says they were all created by the words of God. So this is the way God operates, spoken words. But God's words are filled with faith. With faith. So he spoke them and they came to be. So this is the way that we ought to operate. Anything that is created by words, anything that God created by words, will respond to words if we speak the right words in faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Any situation, any circumstance, any kind of difficulty, regardless of how big you think they are, they will respond to words if you speak the right words. Faith-filled words that are in agreement with the word of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's go to uh, the book of James and see what James says about words because this is very important. Uh, the way James uh, 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 gives it to us is very important that we uh, uh, look at and understand what exactly he's saying. And when we get it, it's going to make a lot of change in our lives. So if you will go with me, please, uh, uh, let's go to James chapter 3. And we're going to read from verse 1 all the way to verse 6. So we're going to James, the book of James, uh, towards the end of your Bible, uh, New Testament. Uh, and we're going to read uh, uh, chapter 3. And uh, from verse 1 to verse 6. And I read, he says, My brethren... Be not many masters, knowing the, that we shall receive the greater condemnation. So he's telling you here, if you're a teacher, you're going to be judged by what you teach. If you, if you teach people the good things, you're going to be rewarded for it. But if you teach them the wrong things, you're going to answer questions for the things that you teach people. And then in verse 2, it says, For in many things we offend all. If a man offend not in word, are you hearing that? He said, if a man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. And the word here, perfect, doesn't really mean perfection. It actually means matured. He's a matured, someone who's grown. He's a perfect man and able to bridle the whole body. And uh, in verse 3, it says, Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us. And we turn about their whole body. Behold also the sheep, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce wings, yet are turned around about with a little small hem or a rotor, uh, whithersoever the governor list. And uh, even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindled. And in verse 6, it says, And the tongue is as a fire. A world of iniquity, so is the tongue amongst our members, that it defileth the whole body, and set on fire the cause of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. And it is set on fire of hell. Did you hear that? So he's telling you here about the tongue, which is where your words come out from. So he's telling you about how powerful your words are. He says they are like a little, little tiny member of their body, just small as it is. But he says it boasts of great things. It can kindle a fire, a fire that can burn and burn and burn and burn and consume things and destroy things. So he's giving us here the reference of how the mouth is. We put a bit, he said we can use a bit and put it in a, in, 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 in a horse mouth and we control the whole horse. As well as you see as big as a sheep is. No matter how big it is, even in the midst of, the, uh, of, of fierce winds, he tells you that with a small hem, which is like a small roro, or in the present uh, uh, word, we can say the steering wheel. The steering wheel is a very small steering wheel. You can use it to control the whole ship. So as is your mouth. It is very important that you understand how critical and how dangerous your mouth can be. If you don't control it, it can set up a fire. 
it can set up something that can be of a big destruction. So that's what James is telling us here. So if we now we've had what James says about the tongue, which is where your words come out from. Now let us look at some other verses in the Bible and see what the Bible says about our own tongue, about the words we speak, about the power of words. So in James chapter 126, I'm going to read the NLT translation. He says, if you claim to be religious, but don't control your tongue, you, have, you are fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. So if you claim that you are religious and you don't have a control over your tongue, you see what I'm saying? If you don't have control over what comes out of your mouth, because what comes out of your mouth can channel your course in life. It can lead you to destruction or a place of salvation. So he's telling you here, if you claim you are religious, but you don't have a control over your tongue, he said that thing which you claim is worth, is worthless. In Psalms, in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, he said, death and life is in the power of tongue. Those who love it will eat the fruit thereof. So you see here, death and life is in the power of your tongue. If you are, if you are in a place of destruction today, pretty much your mouth got you in there. That's what he's saying here. If you are in a place of victory and prosperity, pretty much your mouth got you in there. But people don't really understand because they don't know how important words are. So if you are not using your tongue the right way, he's telling us right here that it can lead to death and also it can lead to salvation. It can bring you good things. It can lead you to a place of victory and success. And it can also lead you to a place of destruction. But if you don't understand how important words are, then people will open their mouth and they say whatever they want to say. And the more they say it in the negative direction, the way their life, they channel their life to that direction. And unless they stop and change what they're saying and turn it around, that's only when they will begin to see changes in their life. So people many a time will struggle through problems, going through difficulties and things that they don't know what the problem is. But actually, if you look very close, it's what comes out of their mouth. That is why it's very important to watch what comes out of your mouth. The mouth, the tongue. He says death and life is dependent on it. Either one you choose. He says if those who love it will eat the fruit thereof. So if you love speaking evil, he says you're going to eat the fruit of that evil. The fruit of death. But if you love speaking good, you say you're going to eat the fruit of that good. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Psalm 141, the Bible says, 141 verse 3, the Bible says, Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. So he's telling you here, he said, set a watch. Set a watch here over my mouth. Is asking God to, to, to say the words in my mouth so that I don't open my mouth and gush out uh, obscenities and gush out evil and gush out that which leads to destruction and death. He's asking God, the psalmist is saying here, he says, say the words, O Lord, before my mouth and keep the doors of my lips. He, he understands here, David understands the importance of words. You know that through your mouth, there can be destruction in your life. And he wants God to help him in that direction. He's asking him to say the word over his mouth. And also keep the doors of his lips so that he doesn't open his mouth and bring destruction through words unto him or unto his life. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Proverbs chapter 6 verse 2, the Bible says, Door as near by the words of your mouth. So what does it mean? To snail is to, to hold somebody in bondage, to hold somebody in captivity, to bind someone, to trap them. That's what that word means. So he says, by the words of your mouth, you are trapped. 
So if you are in a situation where you think you are hemmed in for a long time, where you think that you is going on for a long time and you seem to have no way out of that situation, watch very close what you've been saying. Watch close what you say. You know, if you look at it very well, you will see that it is your mouth that has trapped you in that place. That is why it's very, very important that you watch what you say. How you say it is very, very important. In Proverbs chapter 18, verse 7, the Bible says, A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. He says, A fool's mouth is his destruction. Are you, are you hearing me? So the mouth is the destruction to a fool. To another one, it is something that takes them from one level of glory to another glory, to another level of glory. But it says to a fool, it is his destruction. Why is that so? Because the fool doesn't speak in any, he doesn't speak anything that is in agreement with the word of God. The Bible says the fool says in his heart there is no God. So in his own mouth comes out of, listen to destruction. What he speaks from his mouth. Because he opens his mouth and he says anything that he wants to speak. And the consequence, the outcome, the product of what he says is destruction. That's what the Bible is telling us here. In Proverbs chapter 21 verse 23. Listen very carefully. In Proverbs Chapter 21, verse 23, the Bible says, Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue, keepeth his soul from troubles. Are you hearing me? He says, if you keep your mouth, you keep yourself away from trouble. It's as simple as that. If you keep your mouth from speaking that which is God or evil or deception or profanity or obscenity, he says you keep your soul from trouble, from many troubles. You know, there are people who have landed themselves in big troubles because of what they said in, in their mouth, from them, or because of how they spoke in the past. There are people who have already even lost their lives because of words that came out of their mouth. He said if you keep your words, if you keep your mouth, if you keep, you keep your soul from destruction, in Psalms chapter 12, verse 4, the Bible says, they say, our lips are our own who is Lord over us. That's what they say there. He says, our lips are our own who is Lord over us. So they're saying, uh, you don't, don't in other words, they're saying, don't tell me what to say. I got the right to say what I want to say, how I want to say it, and when I want to say it. Because you don't control my life, you don't rule over my life, I am a free-born entity, and I can say anything I want to say. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And, it's, and, and they keep on, they open their mouths, and they, they, and they speak, and they speak, and they speak. And what happens? Destruction comes. Destruction comes. Because a fool's mouth is his destruction. That's what the Bible says. And they said, our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Are you seeing the, 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 the agreement between these two things? So it is very, very important that we, we watch what we say with our mouth. Even though it's as small as it is. That's what James is saying. But it can land you to so many troubles. It can keep you from getting into anything that is success in your life. It can hem you in. It can hem you in in a, in, in, a, in, a, in a position that you struggle for a very long time without even knowing what the problem is because of your mouth. The words that come out of your mouth. In other words, you can say about this teaching today is the power of words. The power of words. It can be positive, it can be negative. But either way, the, either one you choose, death and life is in the power of the tongue. Those who love it will eat the fruit thereof. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let us see, let's, let's look at how God used words. Because as children of God, we are admonished to be followers or imitators of God. Even as little as their children. That's what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5. 
So now let's see how the master himself, the creator of the heaven and the earth, how he used words. In creation, we know that God spoke and things became. Just like I said in Psalm 33, verse 6, by the word of God were the heavens created and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. So he spoke his words. But remember that God's words are faith-filled words. He didn't say, he, he didn't have the syndrome, the I, I'm just saying syndrome. You know, just, just talking. You know, some people, will, when they speak, they say, I'm just saying, I, I'm just talking, you know. And, and, and nothing they say amounts to anything. Why? Because there is no faith in the words. They're just telling you, there, I'm just talking. I'm just talking. So God did not operate that way, and he is not operating that way, and he will never operate in that way. Why? Because whatever God says happens. Why? Because they are faith-filled words. Let us go to Isaiah chapter 55, and I will read verse 10 and 11, so we can see how God, how he says words. What he expects to happen whenever he speaks. And if we can copy from him, who is our master, then we will have everything we say come to pass. We can change situations. We can turn them around. We can bring dead situations to life. Are you hearing me? Let us go to Isaiah and we can read this. It's so exciting. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are following me, Oh, you will be so blessed at the end of this teaching because a lot of things will change for your life. And now I said we are reading Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11. And the Bible says, For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and uh, returns not there, uh, not hither, but water, but water with the earth and make it bring forth the bud. Uh, that he may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. 11, he says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. He shall not return unto me void, but he shall accomplish that which I, I please, and he shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. Are you hearing that? He's telling you what God, what he has in mind when he speaks his words. He says, they will never come back void. He says, when I say something will happen, it will happen. That's another way. This is a summary of what I just read here. He says, my words will not come back to me void. It's just like the rain or the snow that come down from heaven. He says, it will water the earth. It doesn't just come halfway and go up. Are you hearing me, somebody? When they rain, when they come, they come all the way to the grass, the water, the earth. He says, that is the way his words. He said, anything that he says, he says, it will accomplish that which he's pleased. The purpose, well, he sent that word. It must accomplish that purpose. So that's what the word of God is saying right here. And we have to learn from this. Because if we have the mindset, the idea, the concept, that whenever we speak something, it must happen. If we train our spirit that way, if we begin to pray that way, then we will begin to accomplish so many things in our lives. This is the way God operates. When he speaks, he believes they will come to pass. And some, it may even take a year or a thousand years. There are prophecies in the Bible that took about a thousand years or even more before they came to pass. But God spoke them. They must come to pass. It doesn't matter when it comes to pass. It doesn't matter how long it takes. The God who spoke them is a God of faith. And he believed that those things that he spoke will never come back to him void. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we speak, we ought to operate like the Father God, that the way he operates. We will have to speak faith-filled words. What do I mean by faith-filled words? Find the scripture in the Bible that covers your situation. In any problem that you have, there is a solution in the word of God. Find where that solution is. Are you in lack? Are you in need? Find the scripture. There are so many of them. 
My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. These are faith-filled words. Meditate upon these words until they take a root. They take root in your spirit. Meditate upon them. So when, when that situation arises, you open your mouth, you speak forth. When you speak faith-filled words inspired by the Spirit of God, who is one with your spirit, then they must happen. This is the way Father God approaches. He doesn't just say, I'm just saying, or he speaks and say, maybe it will happen or maybe it will not happen. But if what you say, if what you, if, if the situation that you are, you are dealing with, once you find that solution in the word of God, the word of God that took care of that problem, put that word in your heart. When such problems, when they arrive, speak for that word. Remember, are you sick in your body? Or are you, are you, you know, this, uh, Satan is the one who puts sickness in people's bodies. So he is the one that causes sicknesses and diseases. So, and remember, we are in, in the word where we said he is the God of this word. So sometimes he can put disease in people's body. So are you attacking your body? Find that scripture here in the word of God. First Peter chapter 2 verse 24. Matthew chapter 8 verse 17. Himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Let that word take root in your heart. Meditate upon it. So that when that happens, you open your mouth and say, Body, I called you healed in the name of Jesus. And you will see that will come to pass. It will not fail. It will not fail. Because you, have, you spoke that word in faith. And it's the word of God. So what does God do? He says he will watch over his word to perform it. So he will, he will make it good. He will make it come to pass. That is the beauty of the God that we serve. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So as we continue, train yourself to call things that be not as though they were. Remember in Romans chapter 4 verse 17, the Bible says, God calleth things that be not as though they were. Which means he doesn't speak his, the situation. He doesn't look at a situation and speak that situation. Are you hearing me? Don't miss me right here. It's very important that you get this one. Do not speak your present condition. Speak that which you want to happen, to change that situation. This is the way God operates. And I just gave you that reference in Romans chapter 4 verse 17. He quickens the dead and calls the things that be not as though they were. So you got to know, train yourself to operate that way. If you are finding, if, 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 if you are having difficulties in your finances, don't sit down and say, I am short of money. I lack this uh, 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 thing to solve this problem. I am in need of this. I am in need of that. Oh, if I can have this, if I can have that. Are you hearing me? Because all you are saying is you are still feeding that trouble. You are still feeding the problem. It's not going to change anything. When God looked at darkness during the creation of the earth, he saw darkness. It was all over the earth. But he didn't say anything about darkness. The Bible said, the Bible didn't say he said anything about the darkness. He didn't tell us he said anything about the darkness. But what did God say? He said, light be. That's what he wanted. That's what he was looking for. So, call the things that be not as though they were. Don't look at the trouble. Don't talk about the problem. When you talk about the problem, you magnify it. You make it bigger. You make it bigger. And then you bring fear. And then doubt comes in. And then you remain in that situation. Sometimes it will even get worse. But don't talk about it. Speak that my God is able. He supplied all my needs according to his riches in glory in, in Christ Jesus. He has given me all good things. He has blessed me with all the spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Are you hearing me? 
So situation, I call money to come in. I call the angels to influence the situations, to open up channels, to bring the need that I, the thing that I need to solve this problem to come right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you hearing me? I'm not talking about the problem. I'm talking about the solution. And as long as the solution that you are talking is found in the word of God, as long as you are speaking them in faith, that you are not wavery or doubting, then they will come to pass because God is not a man that he should lie. What he says he will do, he will do it. That's what the Bible says. So in Mark 11, verse 23, a very popular chapter and verse in the Bible, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou moved, be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those in which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he says. So you are speaking to the mountain, to the situation. You are not talking to God about it. Are you hearing me? You are calling the things that be not as though they were. You are not calling to God. If he has given you authority over that situation, then speak directly to the mountain. The mountain, the God ears, they can hear. Remember, anything that is created by words will respond to words. It's as simple as that. They will hear. The Lord Jesus Christ demonstrated this in the Bible, so many places. He spoke to the fig tree, spoke to the sea, to the wind, to dead Lazarus, to fever. Are you hearing me? So when you speak that faith filled words, when you call the things that be not as though they were, call them by faith and believe in your heart that they will come to pass. The Bible says that here, are you hearing me? He says, you will have what you say. So say what you want that you what you want to happen. Don't speak your problem. If you speak your problem, that's what you're gonna get. Because he says you will have what you say. So what are you saying? Are you saying the solution or are you saying the problem? If you're talking about the problem, you will remain in that problem. If you're talking about the solution, like the Bible says, you will have what you say, they will come to you. As long as you've spoken those words in faith, they will not fail. That's what Jesus Christ says here in Mark 11, 23. In Jewel chapter 3, verse 10, like I said earlier, the Bible says, Let the weak say, I am strong. So it's another way of calling the things that be not as though they were. The weak is weak. He knows he's weak. But he's not going about saying, I am sick. I am so sick. Oh, I am so weak. I am so, so, so depressed. I don't know what to do. But the Bible says here, let the weak say, I am strong. I am bold. I am walking in divine health. Let the poor say, I am rich. I have abundance. God has blessed me. Things are coming to me right now. Doors are open unto me right now. I have solutions to my problems. Are you hearing me now? This will work in every situation. In Isaiah chapter 5, chapter 51, verse 19. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 19. The, 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 the Bible says, I create the fruit of the lips. So God says that he creates the fruit of the lips. So what are you saying? What do you want him to create? Are you speaking the negative aspects of, your, of, 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 of the situation? If that is what you're speaking, then that's what is going to be created. You give devil the opportunity or the permission to create it for you. Because he is the one who is there to make those things happen. But if you are speaking the truth about it. Let the weak say I am strong. If you are speaking that I am healthy and I am sound. And I am walking in divine health. That's what the father God is going to create. Because he says I create the fruit of the lips. When you speak them. I make them come to pass. I watch over them to perform them. As long as they agree with his words. Are you hearing me? You cannot just speak at random and speak whatever you want to speak. 
That is why it's very important that you put your nose in the word of God. Know what the word of God says. When you are speaking, speak in accordance with the word of God. Let them agree. And then you will have answers to your problems, solutions to any difficulty. So now, in Lamentation, chapter 3, verse 37, Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 37, Bible says, Who is it that say, and it comes to pass, when the Lord commanded it not? So, who is it that says, and it will come to pass, when the Lord commanded it not? So, this is another way, this is another way of telling you that, speak what the word of God says. There is power in those words that you speak forth. Don't be quiet and think and, uh, and, 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 and speak in, within yourself. No, speak them out. Speak them out so they can hear yourself. He says if you speak, who is it that speak and it come to pass when the Lord commanded it not? He's telling you right here now that if you don't say the things that are in agreement with the word of God, they will not, gonna, they will not, they will not come to pass. That's why it's important that you know what the Bible says. In any situation, there is always a solution in the Word of God. Just find it. Use the Bible concordance and look and find what, what scriptures are available that will help you in that situation. Take those words. Put them in the midst of your heart. Meditate upon them and they will bring faith. Remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And the moment faith is in there, is in there, in those words, and you speak them forth. He says the Lord will make them come to pass. But if you're saying what he didn't say, they will not come to pass. It's as simple as that. In, 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 in Job, remember that you, you, you don't talk your fear. Like I keep saying. Call the things that be not as though they were. Don't call the negative aspect of it. When you call the negative aspect of it, what you're doing is you create fear. And you know what fear brings. You, 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 bring, you put you in a place of doubt. And nothing is going to change for you. In Job chapter 3 verse 25, you know what the Bible says. The thing which I greatly fear is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is come unto me. So your fears will, will, will bring those things to you. The things that you fear. It will bring those situations. They will, they, it, it will attract them to you. So that's why you speak the opposite. Speak what you want to happen in that situation. In Revelation chapter 12 verses 11. The Bible says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They overcame. By what? The word of their testimony. What, is the, what testimony are they saying? Testimonies that are in agreement with the word of God. Those are the things they were testifying. And they overcame who? The kids of the brethren. Satan and his cohorts of hell. And if he was then, then he's still right now because the word of God doesn't change. It's the same. So make your testimonies be based on the word of God so that you will overcome any situations. That's what he's saying here. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. The testimony of Jesus Christ is a spirit of prophecy. That's what the Bible says. Be led by the spirit of God. Let the word of God come out from within you. Be led by the spirit of God. Think about what you want to say. Let it agree with the word of God. Let it be in conformity with the Holy Spirit of God that is one with your spirit. And when you release those words, you will change things and they begin to happen in the direction that you want them to happen. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So now, another principle of words is, another principle, another principle of words is speaking less. Speak less. Are you hearing me? Very, very important. Speak less. The Bible says, in multitude of words, they are one and not the same. That's what the Proverbs, uh, that's what Proverbs says. In multitude of words, they are one and not the same. And it means that 
Show me someone who is talking a lot, multitude of words, and that will show you someone who is singing a lot. Are you hearing me? If you show me someone who is talking, talk, 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 I will show you somebody who is singing a lot. Because in multitude of words, they are wanting not to sing. He cannot say, he cannot avoid it. It is very important that you, you speak less. Let the words that you speak be few, but let them be based in the word of God so that they have power in it. So that you are sure that when you open your mouth and speak about any situation, you are getting a result. Remember that you can confuse your spirit when you speak a lot. I'm just saying, you know, I'm just saying, now your spirit doesn't know when you are serious and when you are not serious. Because I'm just saying it's there. It's a syndrome. I call it, I'm just saying syndrome. It's a big thing. You begin to confuse your spirit. So your spirit doesn't know when you are serious about something and when you are not. So you speak things and they don't happen. Even though what you say is something that is based in the word of God. But your spirit has been trained in so many directions, so it's confused. He doesn't know which one is, are you serious right now? Or is it one of those, I'm just saying, syndrome going on right now? <laughs> are you hearing me, somebody? In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, the Bible says, To him that will love life and see good days, he says, let him restrain his tongue from evil and his lips that he speaks no girl. He says, if you would love to see life, which means long life, and good days, which means abundance, blessings. He says, you got to restrain your lips, your lips, you see, from your tongue, from evil. And that they speak no gal. Gal means deception. So you speak less. The words you speak, let them be words of faith. In, 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 in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, the Bible says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearer. So you want to speak words that are few, but words that will minister grace. To the hearer and also to yourself. He says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Don't speak them. Be a person of few words. A person that will speak and they will happen. You know, your faith gets stronger and stronger. When you have had the first encounter and you speak and it comes to pass, the second time you are more even bold to speak. Because you know they will come to pass. So you're not afraid of any situation because you know once you open your mouth and release those words, they are coming to pass. You don't need to run to a minister or a pastor and say, pray, 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 pastor, please, pray, pray, pray. This happened, that happened, that happened. No, as children of God, we have the power of the Holy Ghost within us. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we can change every situation. So train your spirit that you operate in this way. But you don't run to people for help. Something that you can do for yourself. Are you hearing me? In Matthew chapter 12, verse 36, Matthew 12, 36, the Bible says, Every idle word, every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. If any idle word men shall speak, they will give account of those idle words. What is an idle word? Words that are unproductive, that are useless. I'm just saying syndrome words. <laughs> Are you hearing that again? I'm just saying syndrome words. Jesus, he said, you will give account of those. Jesus is saying it right here. So, from today, make it a point of duty that you will watch over your mouth. The power of life and death is in your tongue. Let the idle words go. Push the delete button. Let them go. Be a person of reservation. 
Don't just open your mouth and speak. It is okay, very, very okay to tell somebody, I'll get back to you tomorrow. Can you please give me some time? Let me call you back. Very, it's okay to do that. So that you will, you, you, you will go within yourself and search within you where the Holy Spirit is dwelling. And then you can get the revelation of how you will answer. When you are asked, so that you don't speak your mouth, open your mouth and speak God, or that which is evil, or that which is unproductive, or that which is corrupt. So, always be, be not in a hurry to answer, to respond. Words that are spoken in the Spirit, they are spoken. And sometimes you cannot recover them. That is why he says death and life is in the power of the tongue. If it's death that you have spoken, you give the enemy the permission to walk death in your life. And you don't want that to happen, do you? No, you don't. So he's okay. Don't speak in a hurry. When you are angry, don't speak. Don't speak out of malice or contention. Don't. Give yourself a pause. If it's a communication over the telephone, say, I'm so sorry. Can I please call you back? Hang the phone. Hang up the phone. So that you don't speak that which will work against you. In Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 3. The Bible says, a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. Are you hearing me again? The same thing I said earlier, the more, the, in, in multitude of words, thou wanted not to offend. So it, now it's telling you here again, it says, a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. In multitude of words, thou wanted not to sin. They are talking about the same thing. So, when you, when you come in a place, you can easily identify what's going on. There are people, the first time they, they meet you, they want to tell you about the whole world in two seconds, in two minutes. They just open their mouth and everything comes out. So he's telling you here, he says, a false voice is known by a multitude of words. Do you know that a fool, when their mouth is shut, People don't know how ignorant or how foolish they are. If they sit down in one place and they're quiet like this and they're just looking, someone on the side will say, oh, that man looks very intelligent. <laughs> Until they open their mouth. And then people know that that's a fool talking. This is the power of silence and speaking less. In James chapter 1 verse 19, the Bible says, we are for my beloved brethren. Let every man be swift to hear. Are you hearing me? Swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to rot. So he says, open your listening ears. Be attentive when you hear. When people are talking, when somebody is saying something, pay close attention. Be very attentive. Hear. Hear. But he says, when it comes to talk, to respond, to answering them back, be slow to speak. That is the reason why he's telling you here to be slow to speak. Because in multitude of words, they want not to sin. Because there is power and death in what you will speak. He says, be slow to speak. And also be slow to write. Are we reading the word of God? We are reading the word of God. That is why this is simple truth gospel. It teaches the word of God based on the word of God and not on human tradition or doctrine or empty biblical exegesis. Now, in Matthew chapter 12, verse 37, the Bible says, For by the words thou shalt be justified, and by the words thou shalt be condemned. This is, well, this is what the Bible, Jesus, Jesus saying this. By what you say, you will be justified. 
I mean, you'll be made right with God. And by what you say, you will be condemned. So what do you choose? Know how to make good confessions. That's, what, that's, that's, the, that's all the thing I've been talking about here. Learn to make good confessions. Confessions that are built upon faith words, faith-filled words. Speak the word of God in consent. Remember, when we talk about confession, that word confession means saying the same thing in consent. So the word of God says, I am, by his stripes, I am healed. Even in the midst of troubled body, in the midst of uh, symptoms, pain. You are not talking about the pain. You are saying, body, you are healed because by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. That is a good confession based in the word of God. And what's going to happen? Father God will see to it that you are healed. He said he will watch over his word to perform it. Jeremiah 12. It is something that you are lacking. You are not making any headway. You are thinking within yourself that every time you make a step forward, you get knocked back three steps. Things are not working out financially for you. Watch what you have been saying. Watch what you have been saying. What you've been saying could be the reason why you are in that position. What the word of God says that he supplies your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. And he says he gives you all things richly to enjoy. My wish above all things that you may prosper and be of health even as your soul prosper. This is the word of God. So are you talking about that lack, the problem that you have, or are you taking authority in the name of Jesus Christ based on the word of God and say, my God supply all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Therefore, I have enough and abundance is coming unto me. I am not moved by what I see. When you speak in that way, you commission the angels of the Lord to go to work for you. They will open channels to bring those, up, to bring those things to you. This will work in any area of your life. It will work. Do you have disobedient children? Children that you think that are going out of control. What are you saying to them? Are you talking to them every day? You're not going to amount to anything. You see the way you're going? You're going into the path of destruction. And it's going to happen very soon. Is that how you're talking to them? If you're talking to them that way, that is the reason why they are still in that condition. But if you speak to them that, of what the word of God says, they are mighty upon the face of the earth. Great is the peace. They are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. They prosper in every good thing. I know they're going to come around. I know the word of God is working on them. Are you hearing me? You pronounce blessings upon them, even in the midst of those things that you are seeing. Those are the faith-filled words. And once you speak faith-filled words, they must come to pass. Because that's what the word of God says. He will watch over his word to perform it. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1, the Bible says, Consider the apostle and the high priest of our confession or profession. Those words are interchangeable. He says, Christ Jesus. So he says, consider the high priest, the apostle and the high priest of our confession. So Jesus Christ is the high priest of what we say. Are you hearing me now? Because he is sitting at the right hand of the Father ever to make intercession for all of us. So when he is at the right hand of the Father, he takes what we say, our confession, our professions, our proclamations, and he takes them and he makes them good for us. Because he is the apostle and the high priest of what we say. So what are you saying? 
Are you calling the things that be not as though they were so that he will take this confession and make it good for you? Or are you saying things the way they are? Don't be a man or a woman of the natural. A man is a spirit. Things happen in the spiritual realm first. Before you see the manifest in the physical. So if you want to deal with them, again, deal with those circumstances based in the word of God. Based according to the word of God. The word of God is a spirit. That's what Jesus Christ said. So look beyond what you can see. Go far beyond that dimension. And know there is somebody who is sitting, Jesus Christ, sitting at the right hand of the Father, ever live to make intercession for us? In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14, he says, let us hold fast our profession. The same word again, confession. He said, hold it fast. For he is faithful that promised. So don't say, by the side of Jesus Christ, I'm healed, body I call you well. And tomorrow you're going to change it and say, huh, I don't know if this is working. Are you hearing me? He says, hold fast your confession. Don't change. If anyone with us, James says, let that, that man think he will get anything from God. For it's like a wave of the sea, driven with the winds and tossed. So you don't, you don't, you don't change it. You don't change it. Even if you don't, if you haven't seen it come, don't change it. Be patient. Remember, you don't see in the realm of the spirit, there is a lot going on there, you don't know. But don't change it. Don't change it. Stand firm in the word which you have spoken if it's based in the word of God. And they will come to pass. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, the Bible says, Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. So are you hearing me? So what are you speaking? What are you binding? What are you losing? They say if it happens here, it will happen in heaven. But it happens here first. So are you binding the things that are negative? Are you binding the situation with negative words? Or are you binding the situation with positive words based on the word of God? Because God will answer to his word. The spirit of God will make it good. If there are bears in the word of God, if you are binding bears in the word of God, Father God will see to it that uh, they are bound in heaven. That's what this scripture just said now. So in, in a way, don't make, so don't make negative confessions. It will not help you. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 13, the Bible says, Your words have been stout against me. It means they, 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 they are working against me. I wanted to do something for you. But because of your negative confession, I cannot move. I cannot do anything because your words are too strong for me. They are, they, they, they are stout against me. That's why it is wrong to make negative confessions. Don't speak them. It will be very, very more splendid for us for you to be quiet than you making negative confessions. It will not help you in any way at all. So, beloved, let us work and use words as our Father who is in heaven, the way he uses those the way he uses words so that we can get results to our prayers so we can speak things and see them come to pass because he is faithful that promise blessed be the name of the lord jesus christ now let, let's look at a few examples of people who spoke in the bible those who spoke negativity and got things that are negative those who spoke in their positive form and uh, were blessed. David is one of them. Remember the story of David and Goliath? If you read it very well, you will see many times David said what he was going to do to Goliath before it ever happened. Based on faith. 
Remember, his faith came up. First of all, he smote the lion and then a bear. And then his faith was coming up. You see that? That's why it's good to build your faith in the word of God. Because when you have victory the first time, you're going to be even more bold to have the second victory. He said all the things he was going to do to Goliath. Did they come to pass? It came to pass. Just like the man spoke it. Based in the faith, in the word of God. He wasn't dependent on himself. He was dependent on God. His strength came from God. And now we, we know about Caleb and Joshua. When they were sent with all the ten to go and spy out the promised land. And all the ten came and spoke what? Evil report. The Bible says they gave evil report. And they, they, they persuaded the people. They influenced the people to go in that direction. They said there are giants in the land. They cannot take it. Regardless of what Joshua and Caleb did. So Joshua and Caleb made a good report and said, we are well able to take it. Let's go right now and take it. God is with us. But the ones who made the negative confession were able to convince the people. So what did they get? Father God said, for very well every one day that you were in that land, spying the land, you're going to spend every one day for one year in the wilderness. And it was 40 days. So it was 40 years. And every one of them died. None of them got into the promised land. Except the younger ones, the little ones. But Caleb and Joshua, what did they do? Because they made a positive confession, they were catapulted into that promised land. Joshua, as a matter of fact, was the one who led the people in there. And Caleb, even at the age of 85, was so bold to go and take a mountain. Are you hearing me, somebody? The woman with the issue of blood. She kept saying, if I will touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Was she made whole? Yes, she was made whole. Bible said she was made whole, complete. Power of confession. Fair field confession. And we know the Israelites, the confession they also made in the wilderness. No. They kept saying, we're going to die in this wilderness. We're going to die in this wilderness. We're going to die in this wilderness. What happened, my brothers and sisters? They perish in the wilderness. For with the words of their mouth, they were judged. What they said that will happen to them, God said, okay, that's what you said it will happen. That's what will happen. Remember what the Bible says. Your word has been stout against me. He wanted to, he, he, he gave them deliverance. Gave them the land of uh, the, 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 the land of Canaan. He only gave it to them. All they had to do to go possess it, to go take it. But they kept saying, we can't, we can't, we can't, we couldn't. And then they, their words was what they got. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've come to the end of today's program. If you're watching this program and you are not yet a Christian, it means you are not born again. It means if you die right now, you don't know if you're going to go to heaven or, de or, or, or hell. Now is your opportunity. Don't let it go away from you. Jesus Christ has already paid the price for all sins of mankind. And all he's asking you today is to receive him as your Lord and your Savior. And your spirit will be recreated by the Holy Ghost. And you'll become a new creature. So today is another opportunity for you to receive him today as your Lord and your Savior. If you're watching this program and then you are not sure if you are a Christian or not, maybe you were a member of a church, but you are not sure if Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior, if you made him Lord and Savior of your life, or you've never even made it, even, you don't belong to a church, you've never even made him your Lord and your Savior in the first place. Now is an opportunity. I'm going to lead you now in a prayer. If you would pray this prayer, mean it in your, from your heart. Today you will become a new creature in Christ Jesus, recreated by the power of the Holy Spirit. Say this prayer with me. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe he is your son. He died for my sins. You raised him from the dead on the third day. 
Jesus Christ. I ask you this day to come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. I believe I'm born again. I believe I'm a Christian now. And I believe that I'm a child of God. I give you all the praise, Father God. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer, my brother, oh, my sister, you are now a child of God. We're coming to the family of God. We're coming to the kingdom of God. Now, there is a subsequent experience which we call baptism of the Holy Spirit or being filled with the Spirit of God. It is evidenced by speaking with other tongues. It's very important. I have a teaching on my archive on YouTube titled, Speaking in Tongues is for Every Believer. If you find that teaching, it will walk you through how to be filled with the Spirit of God and speak with many tongues. Find a very good church where you can be a member of that church. A church where they teach the Word of God. Remember, you are now a baby Christian, but you need to grow so that Satan don't take advantage of you. Peter says, desire the sincere make of the Word of God that you may grow thereby. So find a good place where they teach the Word of God. And remember that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. As always, remember it's those who hear the word of God and do it. They are the ones that get the full benefits of the word of God. Surely there is an end and your expectations will never be cut off. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.